If you're in the process of designing your custom day planner, stop and listen to this video first. There are so many details that go into the design of a custom planner, truly, like so many. The calendar pages are just the beginning. Once you've decided what format you're gonna use and have a good handle on what makes your planner unique and your specific planning philosophy, and you know who you're building the planner for, which is your ideal customer, it's time to dig into some pretty important details before building out the entire design. Today, I'm gonna dive into three crucial factors you need to consider when building out your custom planner design. Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Heather Harris, founder of Copper Bottom Design Co., a boutique product development agency that specializes in planner design and manufacturing overseas. Today, we're gonna dig into your unique planner design and beyond the calendar pages, there's some things you really need to consider. These are those nitty gritty details that will make your planner perfect. Detail number one is your holidays. Now, incorporating holidays into your planner is like, duh, I know, why are we talking about this? But it can be kind of a headache. There are so many holidays to choose from. Do you do the bare bones, just US holidays? Do you incorporate religious holidays. I mean, we don't want to cut anybody out or neglect a certain demographic of people. It's just become really hard to choose in this age of inclusivity. And of course, we want to incorporate all of the holidays for everybody so our planner is useful for everybody, but that can be a really long list. And if your planner boxes are small, you don't want them to be taken up by an entire list of holidays and then people can't even write their own plans in the squares. So as you can see, it can be a big decision on what to include and what to leave out. But what's vitally important is your end user. You're making a planner for a specific person. So think about what specific holidays Days will be useful to them when planning their days. For the sake of sanity, I'm going to give you some tips. The most important thing to consider is where is your planner being sold? Is your shop shipping internationally? Like, do you have customers from Canada that might be using your planner? If so, you definitely want to include at least those national holidays. Adding diverse holidays for not only this country, but other countries can open yourself up to a broader market and more planner sales. So it's important to consider adding those other holidays for other countries. You should also consider listing holidays for major religions. You wanna include Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Islam, Hinduism, am I forgetting anybody? basically all of those religious holidays to capture a global market. We have so many people from various religions and backgrounds living in the United States. So even if you're not selling to outside countries where those holidays are prominent, there's most likely somebody in the U.S. that's going to buy your planner that follows those holidays. Make sure you're including things that are going to be useful to your user. Something to consider is maybe the U.K. They have bank holidays where offices, businesses are closed, schools are closed, you want to make sure you include those because that's definitely going to dictate what you're planning for that day. Okay, hopefully I got my point with the holidays. Next up is Sunday versus Monday start. Now this is wildly debated and people have very specific opinions on which they prefer. Personally, as a traditionalist, I like to look at a big monthly calendar with the start on Sunday. It's just how I grew up looking at the calendar. It's how my brain works when I'm looking at the month. Sunday start, Saturday end to the week. That's what I prefer. But when I'm planning on my weekly schedule, I like the week to start on Monday because I like my Saturday and Sunday together at the end of the week. I mean... I don't know, it might be a little OCD, but does anybody else cringe when you're entering the weekend and you're gonna go away and the line has to skip from one week into the next because your plans spread over the weekend? It's like nails on a chalkboard to me. So in order to keep it clean to my planner, I like my Saturday and Sunday together. So the weekend activities are nice and packaged and 
two columns and we call it a week. Regardless of your preference, and now I know mine is split, I do recommend keeping it consistent throughout your planner. So if you want your weekly pages to start on a Monday and end on a Sunday, you should have your monthly pages match that same format. It can be very confusing to be in your week planning one way and then flipping to the monthly section and your brain has to do that like mental switch to be like, oh, right, okay, it starts on Sunday in the monthly section, but not in the weekly section. It's just one of those things that you're probably not going to notice. It's not going to make you pause per se in your planning, but your brain does have to do some sort of jump in its thought process. And that can just be one of those like unrecognizable barriers or things that make people a little uneasy about using your planner. Consistency creates simplicity and then your planner's perfect. Another thing to consider is numbering the weeks of the year. Now, not everybody does this. It's in some planners. And back in the day, I used to think like, why is this even in here? Who would number the weeks of the year? But now that I'm even more into the planning world, it makes total sense to me. If somebody has a goal, like a 12 week goal. Numbering the weeks of the year is really helpful in achieving that goal, tracking that goal and your progress across time. It can also help the user have a little countdown to like countdown to graduation or countdown to a vacation. Even paying off debt is another reason to like count down your weeks. So it's a huge thing to include if your planning philosophy includes specific goals that might take a long period of time, consider adding week numbers to your pages. And here's a pro tip. Some years actually have 53 weeks instead of 52. So do your homework and make sure it's right in your planner. While there are even more design details to consider, I think these are the three most important ones. Remember, you're designing a planner that's supposed to be specific to your ideal customer's unique needs. If some of these details could be great in incorporating, build them into your planner design. If I've inspired you to dig into your planner design, check out last week's video where I talked about color because there's some good things to consider when incorporating color into your planner design. See you next time.